Chapter seven, location, location, location. Location, noun, real estate term that refers to the position of a piece of real estate as it relates to the value of that real estate. Evan was in trouble. So far, he'd earned $47.11, which was more money than he'd ever had in his whole life. But today was Friday. There were only three days left, three days to beat Jesse. He needed to earn almost $53 to win the bet. And that meant each day he had to earn, Evan tried to do the math in his head, 53 divided by three. 53 divided by three. His brain spun like a top. He didn't know where to begin. He went to his desk, pulled out a piece of paper, his basketball schedule from last winter, and flipped it over to the back. He found the stub of a pencil in his bottom desk drawer, and on the paper he wrote, 53 divided by three equals. He stared and stared at the equation on the page. The number 53 was just too big. He didn't know how to do it. Jesse would know how, he muttered, scribbling hard on the page. Jessie could do long division. Jessie had her multiplication facts memorized all the way up to 14 times 14. Jessie would look at a problem like this and just do it in her head. Snap. Evan felt his mouth getting tight, his fingers gripping the pencil too hard as he scribbled a dark storm cloud on the page. His math papers from school were always covered in X's. Nobody else got as many X's as he did. Nobody. Draw a picture, Mrs. DeFazio's voice floated in his head. She had always reminded him to draw a picture when he couldn't figure out how to start a math problem. A picture of what? He asked in his head. Anything, came the answer. Anything? Yes, anything, as long as there are 53 of them. Dollar signs. Evan decided to draw dollar signs. He started to draw three rows of dollar signs. One, two, three, he counted as he drew. Four, five, six, he drew. By the time he reached 53, his page had 17 dollar signs in each row. And then those two extra dollar signs left over. Evan drew a ring around those two extras. 17 dollar signs and two left over. Evan stared at the picture for a long time. He wrote Friday next to the first row, Saturday next to the second row, and Sunday next to the third row. Evan looked at the picture. It started to make sense. He needed to make $17 on Friday, $17 on Saturday, and $17 on Sunday. And somewhere over the three days, he needed to make two extra bucks in order to earn $53 by Sunday evening. Evan felt his heart jump in his chest. He had done it. He had figured out 53 divided by three. That was a fourth grade problem. That was fourth grade math. And he hadn't even started fourth grade and no one had helped him. Not mom, not grandma, not Jesse. He'd done it all by himself. It was like shooting the winning basket in double overtime. He hadn't felt this good since the lemonade war had begun. But $17 a day? How was he going to do that? Yesterday he'd made $45, but that was because he'd had help and free supplies from his friends. They weren't going to want to run a lemonade stand every day, especially on the last days of summer vacation. He needed a plan, something that would guarantee good sales. The weather was holding out, that was for sure. It was going to hit 95 degrees today. A real scorcher. People would be thirsty, all right. Evan closed his eyes and imagined a crowd of thirsty people all waving dollar bills at him. Now, where was he going to find a lot of thirsty people with money to spend? An idea popped into Evan's head. Yup, it was perfect. He just needed to find something with wheels to get him there. It took Evan half an hour to drag his loaded wagon to the town center, a distance he usually traveled in less than five minutes by bike. But once he was there, 
He knew it was worth it. It was lunchtime and the shaded benches on the town green were filled with people sprawling in the heat. Workers from the nearby stores on their half hour lunch breaks, moms out with their kids, old people who didn't want to be cooped up in their houses all day. High school kids on skateboards slooshed by. Preschoolers climbed on the life-size sculpture of a circle of children playing Ring Around the Rosy. Dogs lay under trees, their tongues hanging out. Pant, pant, pant. Evan surveyed the scene and picked his spot, right in the center of the green where all the paths met. Anyone walking across the green would have to pass his stand. And who could resist lemonade on a day as hot as this? But first, he wheeled his wagon off to the side, parking it halfway under a huge rhododendron. Then he crossed the street and walked into the Big Dipper. The frozen air felt good on his skin. It was like getting dunked in a vat of just melted ice cream. And the smells? Hmm. A mix of vanilla, chocolate, coconut, caramel, and bubble gum. He looked at the tubs of ice cream, all in a row, carefully protected behind a pane of glass. The money in his pocket tingled. He had plenty left over after buying five cans of frozen lemonade mix with his earnings from yesterday. What would it hurt to buy just one cone? Or a milkshake? Or maybe both? Can I help you? asked the woman behind the counter. Uh, yeah, said Evan. He stuck his hand in his pocket and felt all the money. Bills and coins ruffled between his fingers. Money was meant to be spent. Why not spend a little? I, uh... Evan could just imagine how good the ice cream would feel sliding down his hot throat. Creamy, sweet, like cold, golden deliciousness. He let his mind float as he gazed at the swirly buckets of ice cream. The sound of laughter brought him back to earth in a hurry. He looked around. It was just some girls he didn't know at the water fountain. But it had sounded like Megan Moriarty. Can you please tell me how much a glass of lemonade costs? Three dollars, said the woman. Really? said Evan. That much? How big's the cup? The woman pulled a plastic cup off a stack and held it up. It wasn't much bigger than the eight ounce cups Evan had in his wagon. Wow, three bucks, that's a lot, said Evan. Well, thanks anyway. He started to walk to the door. Hey, said the woman, pointing to the ice cream case. I'm allowed to give you a taste for free. Really, said Evan. Then, uh, could I taste the strawberry slam? The woman handed him a tiny plastic spoon with three licks worth of pink ice cream on it. Evan swallowed it all in one gulp. Ah. <sighs> Back outside, he got to work. First, he filled his pitchers with water from the drinking fountain. Then he stirred in the mix. Then he pulled out a big blue marker and wrote on a piece of paper, $2 per cup, best price in town. He'd barely finished setting up when the customers started lining up. And they didn't stop. For a full hour, he poured lemonade. The world is a thirsty place, he thought, as he nearly emptied his fourth pitcher of the day. And I am the lemonade king. Later, Evan would think of something his grandma said. Pride goeth before a fall. When Evan looked up, there was Officer Ken his hands on his hips looking down on him. Evan gulped. He stared at the large holstered gun strapped to Officer Ken's belt. Hello, said Officer Ken, not smiling. Hi, said Evan. Officer Ken did the bike rodeo every year at Evan's school. He was also the cop who had shown up last fall when there was a hurt goose on the recess field. Officer Ken was always smiling. Why isn't he smiling now? Evan wondered. Do you have a permit? Asked Officer Ken. He had a very deep voice, even when he talked quietly like he did now. You mean like a bike permit? That's what the rodeo was all about. If they passed the rodeo, the third graders got their bike permits. 
which meant they were allowed to ride to school. No, I mean a permit to sell food and beverages in a public space. You need to get a permit from the town hall and pay a fee for the privilege. Pay the town hall to run a lemonade stand? Was he kidding? Evan looked at Officer Ken's face. He didn't look like he was kidding. I didn't know I needed one, said Evan. Sorry, friend, said Officer Ken. I'm going to have to shut you down. It's the law. But, but there are lemonade stands all over town, said Evan. He thought of Jesse and Megan's lemonade stand. When he'd wheeled by with his wagon more than an hour ago, their stand had looked like a beehive with small kids crowding around. He had read the sign over their stand, free face painting, nail polishing, hair braiding. What a gimmick, but it sure looked like it was working. You know, said Evan, there's a stand on Damon Road right now. You should go bust them. Officer Ken smiled. We tend to look the other way when it's in a residential neighborhood. But right here on the town green, we have to enforce the law. Otherwise, we'd have someone selling something every two feet. But there had to be some way to convince Officer Ken. How could Evan make him understand? You see, I've got this little sister, and we've got a, a competition going to see who can sell the most lemonade. And I've got to win because she's... He couldn't explain the rest. About fourth grade, and how embarrassed he was to be in the same class as his kid's sister, and how it made him feel like a great big loser. Evan looked up at Officer Ken. Officer Ken looked down at Evan. It was like Officer Ken was wearing a mask, a no smiling, I'm not your buddy mask. Then Officer Ken shook his head and smiled and the mask fell off. I've got a little sister, too, he said. Love her to death now, but when we were kids... Officer Ken sucked in his breath and shook his head again. Ooh! Then the mask came back, and Officer Ken looked right at Evan for ten very stern seconds. Tell you what, said Officer Ken, I do have to shut you down. The law's the law, but before I do, I'll buy one last glass of lemonade. How's that sound? Evan's face fell. Sure, he said without enthusiasm. He poured an extra tall cup and gave it to the policeman. Officer Ken reached into his pocket and handed Evan a $5 bill. Keep the change, he said. A contribution to the Big Brother Fund. Now clean up your things and don't leave any litter behind. He lifted his cup in a toast as he walked away. Evan watched him go. Wow, he thought, I just sold the most expensive cup of lemonade in town. Evan stared at the $5 bill in his hand. It was funny. Two days ago, he would have felt as rich as a king to have that money in his hands. It was enough to buy two slices of pizza and a soda with his friends. It was enough to rent a video and have a late night at someone's house. It was enough to buy a whole bag full of his favorite candy mix at CVS. Two days ago, he would have been jumping for joy. Now he looked at the $5 and thought, it's nothing. Compared to the $100 he needed to win the war, $5 was nothing. He felt somehow that he'd been robbed of something. Maybe the happiness he should have been feeling. He loaded everything from his stand into the wagon, making sure he didn't leave a scrap of litter behind. He still had a glass full of lemonade left in one pitcher, not to mention another whole pitcher already mixed up and unsold. So he poured himself a full cup. Then, before beginning the long, hot haul back to his house, he found an empty spot on a shaded bench and pulled his earnings out of his pockets. He counted once. He counted twice. Very slowly, he had made $65. The cups and lemonade mix had cost $9. When he added in his earnings from Wednesday and Thursday, he had $103.11. Now, that's enough, he thought. 
Chapter 8. Going Global. Global. Adjective. Throughout the world. Refers to expanding one's market beyond the immediate area of production. On Saturday morning, Jessie slept in. And even when she opened her eyes at 9.05, she still felt tired. How can I wake up tired? She wondered as she buried her face in her pillow and dozed off. Five minutes later, she was awake for real, remembering why she was so tired. Yesterday's lemonade stand had been the hardest work of her life. Face painting, hair braiding, nail polishing. It had sounded like such a good idea. Jessie had been sure that every kid in the neighborhood would line up to buy a cup of lemonade. But that was the problem. Every kid had lined up for lemonade and then wanted face painting and hair braiding and fingernail polishing and toenail polishing. One boy had asked for face paintings on both cheeks, both arms, and his stomach. One girl begged for lots of little braids with ribbons woven in. And the nail polishing. They all wanted different colors and decals, and it was impossible to get them to sit still long enough for the polish to dry. We're going to run out of lemonade, Megan had said to Jessie at noon, as the line stretched all the way to the street. Pour half cups instead of full ones, whispered Jessie. It has to last. Jessie and Megan had each made $24 on lemonade but they'd worked eight hours to do it. At the end of the day, they'd agreed. A good idea, but not worth it. After breakfast, Jessie pulled out her lockbox and sat on her bed. She kept the box hidden in her closet on a shelf under some sweaters. She kept the key in a plastic box in her desk drawer. The plastic box was disguised to look exactly like a pack of gum. He would never know it was hollow and had a secret sliding panel on its side. Jessie unlocked the box and opened the lid. First, she took out the three torn slips of paper. There was one for value added and one for goodwill. There was also a new one that Jessie had added last night. Profit margin. Sales less all operating costs divided by the number of sales. The result is a ratio. For example, if it costs you $300 to make 100 hats and you sell those hats for $500, the profit margin is 500 minus 300 divided by 100 equals 2 divided by 1. Jessie lined up all three scraps of paper on the bed beside her. She wasn't sure why she was saving these words, but she felt like they belonged in her lockbox. Next, she took out her lemonade earnings. Every day, Megan had squealed over how much money they'd made. But every day, Jessie had known, it's not enough. It's not going to be enough to win. Jessie counted the money. So far, she had earned $40. It was a lot of money, but it wasn't nearly enough. She still needed to earn 60 more dollars. And today was Saturday. Only two more selling days before she and Evan counted their earnings on Sunday night. How is she going to sell enough lemonade to earn $60 in two days? She couldn't. That was the problem. No kid could earn $100 in just five days by selling lemonade. The profit margin was too small. She knew because she'd used her calculator to figure it out last night. The numbers said it all. There was no way two girls in one neighborhood could sell 375 cups of lemonade. Nobody wanted that much lemonade, no matter how hot the day was. Jessie looked at the money in her lockbox and the page of calculations on her desk. Any other kid would have quit, but Jessie wasn't a quitter. On good days, Jessie's mom called her persistent. On bad days, she told her she just didn't know when enough was enough. Profit margin for one can of lemonade, eight cups. Sales, eight cups at 50 cents a cup equals eight times 50 cents equals $4. Operating costs, lemonade cost equals $1.25. Eight paper cups cost 
15 cents. Total operating costs equals $1.40. Number of sales, eight cups equals eight sales. Profit margin equals $4 minus $1.40 divided by eight equals $2.60 divided by eight equals 0.325 divided by one. So this means that for every one cup of lemonade sold, we earn about 32 cents. I get half the profit and Megan gets half the profit. That means I earn about 16 cents for every cup we sell. I need to earn $60 to be Evan. $60 equals 6,000 cents because 60 times 100 equals 6,000. So how many times does 16 go into 6,000? 6,000 divided by 16 equals how many cups I need to sell equals 375. I need to sell 375 cups of lemonade. I am doomed. Jessie reached for 10 bright ideas to light up your sales. It was on her bedside table, right next to Charlotte's web. Jessie's hand hovered. She looked longingly at Wilbur and Fern watching Charlotte hanging by a thread. But this was war, and she couldn't stop to read for fun. She grabbed the booklet and opened it to bright idea number six. An hour later, she had a new scrap of paper stashed in her lockbox and a whole new page of calculations on her desk. It might work. It could work. But she and Megan would have to risk everything, everything they'd earned over the past three days. And Jessie would have to be braver than she had ever been in her whole life. Jessie carried her lockbox and calculations downstairs. She went into the kitchen and pulled down the school directory, scanning the names of all of the third grade girls from last year. She knew them all, from Evan, from recess, from the lunchroom. Knew who they were, knew their faces, which ones were nice, which ones were not so nice. But she didn't really know any of them. Not enough to call them up. Not enough to say, want to do something today? Not enough to ask, would you like to have a lemonade stand with me? These girls were going to be her classmates. Jessie felt her face grow hot and her upper lips start to sweat. What was it going to feel like to walk into that classroom on the first day of school with all those eyes looking at her? Would they stare? Would they tease? Would they ignore her even if she said hi? Jessie looked at the names, then slammed the directory shut. She couldn't do it. She just wasn't brave enough. Evan walked into the kitchen and grabbed an apple from the fruit bowl. A cloud of fruit flies rose up in the air and settled again. Evan inspected the apple and then bit into it without washing it first. Jessie wanted to say something but held her tongue. She looked at him and thought, it is never going to feel normal not talking to Evan. Hey, she said. Evan raised his apple to her, his mouth too stuffed to talk. So is Paul coming over today? She asked. Evan shook his head, munching noisily. Well, is anyone coming over? Jessie was curious to see what the enemy was up to today. Yesterday, Evan's smile had told her plenty. He had sold a lot of lemonade. A lot. But what was he going to do today? Evan shrugged his shoulders. He swallowed so hard it looked like he was choking down an ocean liner. But you are setting up a stand, right? Asked Jessie. Nah, I'm good, said Evan, looking closely at his apple. I'm just going to take it easy today. He took another enormous bite and walked out of the kitchen and down the basement stairs. Take it easy? How could he take it easy? You didn't take it easy when you were in the middle of a war. Unless, unless he had already won the war. Could that be possible? It was impossible. There was no way Evan had earned $100 in just three days of selling lemonade. No way. Jessie's mind skittered like one of those long-legged birds on the beach. Had he? Could he? Were her calculations wrong? Was there some other way? 
Had she overlooked some detail, some trick? Was she missing something? Jesse flipped open the school directory. Maybe he had a hundred dollars. Maybe he didn't. She couldn't take a chance. She started putting pencil check marks next to the names of girls she thought might work out. She'd gone over the list twice when the doorbell rang. It was Megan. I've got a new idea, said Jesse. Oh, not more lemonade, said Megan, sinking onto the couch in the family room. I'm tired of selling lemonade, and it's just too hot. I practically had sunstroke yesterday painting all those faces. We're done with that, said Jesse. No more extra services. Doesn't pay off, but here's an idea. Forget lemonade. Let's go to the 7-Eleven, said Megan. Is Evan home? We could all go. No, he's not home, said Jesse, eyeing the door to the basement. She needed Megan to be on board with her plan. She needed Megan to make the phone calls. Look, this is great, and we don't need to sell the lemonade. Jesse laid out all the details. She showed Megan the new scrap of paper. Franchise, the right to sell a company's products and use the company's name and logo in a certain area. Then she showed Megan her page of calculations. At first, Megan buried her head under a pillow, but then she poked her head out like a turtle and started to listen for real. That sounds like a pretty good plan, she said. But is it really going to work? Jessie looked at her calculations. She'd done them twice. It should, she said. I really think it should. She frowned, suddenly not so sure of herself. It's a big upfront investment and a lot of work organizing everybody. But once they're set up, we should just be able to sit back and watch the money roll in. The key is spreading everybody out so there'll be plenty of customers. We'll need at least 10 girls. 15 would be better. That's the whole fourth grade class, said Megan, looking doubtful. How are we going to get them to do this? Well, you could phone them all up, said Jessie. She handed Megan the school directory, open to the third grade page. Me, said Megan. Why me? Because they know you, said Jessie. They know you, too. Yeah, but they like you. Megan shook her head. Not all these girls are my friends. Even the ones that aren't your friends, they still like you. Everybody likes you, Megan. Megan looked embarrassed. Oh, everybody likes you too, she said. No, they don't, said Jessie. They really don't. There was an uncomfortable silence between the two girls. Then Jessie shrugged her shoulders and said, I don't know why those girls in my class last year didn't like me. I'm hoping this year will be better. Megan tapped her fingers on her knees. You're nervous, huh? About fourth grade? She asked. Jessie thought hard. I'm worried that I won't make any new friends, she said. You know, that all the kids will think I'm just some puny second grader and that... She took a deep breath. I don't belong. Megan looked up at the ceiling for a minute. Do you have an index card? She asked. Huh? I need an index card, said Megan. Do you have one? Jessie went to the kitchen desk and got an index card. She handed it to Megan. Megan started to write something on the card. What are you doing? Asked Jessie. I'm writing a comment card, said Megan. That's something you're going to miss from third grade. We did it every Friday. We each got assigned a person and you had to write something positive about that person on an index card. Then it got read out loud. She folded up the card and handed it to Jessie. Jessie unfolded the card and read what Megan had written. You're a really nice person and you have good ideas all the time. You're fun to be with and I'm glad you're my friend. Jessie stared at the index card. She kept reading the words over and over. Thanks, she whispered. You can keep it, said Megan. That's what I did. I've got all my comment cards in a basket on my desk. And whenever I'm feeling sad or kind of down on myself, I read through them. They really help me feel better. Jessie folded the index card and put it in her lockbox. She was going to save it forever. It was like having a magic charm. So how about I make half the phone calls and you make the other half, said Jessie. 
Okay, said Megan, jumping up from the couch. It was surprising how many almost fourth grade girls had absolutely nothing to do three days before school started. In less than an hour, Jesse and Megan had 13 lemonade franchises signed up for the day. The rest of the day was work, but it was fun. Jesse and Megan attached the old baby carrier to Megan's bike, then rode to the grocery store and spent every penny of their earnings on lemonade mix. 52 cans. They actually bought out the store. The four bags of cans filled the carrier like a boxy baby. They also bought five packages of paper cups. When they got back to Megan's house, Jessie tucked the receipt in her lockbox, right next to her comment card. Jessie liked receipts. They were precise and complete. A receipt always told the whole story, right down to the very last penny. Salisbury Farms, your neighborhood grocery store. 232 Central Avenue, September 1st, 2007, 11.42 a.m. Store 23, transaction 246. Workstation system 5002, cashier KD68VW. Cashier's name, James. Stock unit ID, Sia James. Phone number 800-555-1275. Tastes Right Lemonade, 52 at $1.25, $65. Pixie Paper Cups, 5 at $2.85, $14.25. Subtotal, $79.25. Tax, 75 cents. Total, $80. Cash, $80. Change due, cash, $0.00. Number of items sold, 57. Get all your back-to-school supplies at Salisbury Farms. Happy Labor Day! Then they tossed construction paper and art supplies into the carrier and started making the rounds. First stop, Sally Knight's house. She was ready for them with a table, chair, and empty pitcher all set up. Jessie mixed the lemonade. Megan quickly made a lemonade for sale, 75 cents a cup sign, and they left Sally to her business. The deal was that Sally got to keep one third of the profits and Jesse and Megan got to keep the rest. After they'd set up all 13 lemonade stands, each with enough mix to make four pitchers of lemonade, Jesse and Megan hung out at Megan's house, baking brownies and watching TV. Then they hopped on their bikes again and made the rounds. Jesse and Megan stopped in front of Sally's house first. The lemonade stand was nowhere to be seen. What do you think is going on? asked Megan. Jessie had a bad feeling in her stomach. Something must have gone wrong. They rang the doorbell. Sally came to the door. Hurry, she said, grabbing their arms and pulling them inside. My mom goes totally mental when the AC is on and the door is open. Where's your stand? asked Jessie nervously, feeling goosebumps ripple up her arms because of the suddenly cool air. Sally waved her hand. Done, she said. I sold out in like half an hour. It's so darn hot. We made $24 besides tips. Do I get to keep the tips? Sure, said Jessie. Tips? She'd forgotten about those on her calculations page. Sally handed Jessie some crumpled bills and an avalanche of coins. $8 for Jessie and Megan each. So you want to stay and have some ice cream? Sally asked. Okay, said Megan. And we brought you a thank you brownie, you know, for being part of our team. That had been bright idea number nine. After a bowl of the Moose's Loose ice cream, Jessie and Megan headed out. The story was the same at every girl's house. The lemonade had sold out quickly and the money just kept rolling in. I can't believe we made... Uh, how much did we make? Squealed Megan once they got back to her house. One hundred and four dollars each! Each! shouted Jessie. She couldn't stop hopping from one foot to the other. I've never seen so much money in my life! Jessie was already running numbers in her head. Subtracting the eighty dollars that she and Megan had spent on lemonade and cups, each girl had made a profit of sixty-four dollars. If they increased the number of franchises from thirteen to twenty-six, they could each make one hundred and twenty-eight dollars in one day. If they ran the twenty-six franchises every day for one week, 
They could each make $896. Jesse pulled out a piece of paper and scribbled a graph. The sky was the limit. Megan pretended to faint when Jesse showed her the graph. What are you going to do with your money? She asked from the floor. Win the war, thought Jesse. Oops, she couldn't say that to Megan. Megan didn't even know about the lemonade war. After all, Megan liked Evan. Jesse suddenly wondered, if Megan knew about the war, whose side would she be on? All at once, Jesse felt as if Evan were a hawk, circling above, waiting to swoop down and snatch Megan away. Oh, she was so mad at him. He deserved to lose everything. Is $104 enough to win? Wondered Jesse. Surely Evan couldn't have earned more than that. Still, better safe than sorry, she would work all day tomorrow, Sunday, selling lemonade. So, said Megan, what are you going to do with the money? She was kicking off her sneakers and fanning herself with a magazine. Jesse said, I'm going to donate all my money to the Animal Rescue League. Megan stopped waving the magazine. Oh, that is so nice of you. I want to donate my money too. She dropped the magazine and started shoving her money toward Jesse. Here, give mine to the Animal Rescue League too. On the card, just put both our names. The money came at her so fast, Jesse didn't know what to say. There it was, $208. $208, all in her hands. She had won. She had really and truly won the lemonade war. Just promise me one thing, said Megan. No lemonade stand tomorrow, okay? Okay, said Jesse. She didn't need a lemonade stand on Sunday if she had $208 today. My dad said tomorrow's the last day before the heat breaks, said Megan. So we're going to the beach for the whole day. Want to come? Sure, said Jesse. Maybe Evan wants to come too, said Megan. Jesse shook her head. No, Evan's busy all day tomorrow. He told me he's got plans. Megan shrugged. Too bad for him. Yep, said Jesse thinking of all that money. Too bad for him.